we've been watching Breaking Bad because Dan's never seen it. And we realized that when Miracle gets mad, she does this like fast breathing thing. Like she gets all like worked up and <laughs> and we realize she looks just like Tio Salamanca. <laughs> when she gets really mad, she does the same heavy breathing as Hector Salamanca and she has a little bell. So she's now our grumpy little geriatric drug lord. Well, she does have medication, doesn't she? She has eardrops and prescription food. And she is old. And she is old. And she can't hear. And she is grumpy. And we do have to clean up her poop. <laughs> it's weird how much that kind of fits. So she is now Miracle Salamanca. I love me. She doesn't care. I yeah, like whatever. Fine. This is the internet age. The internet age where it's adorable when your cat resembles a geriatric drug lord. Yeah. That's the internet. We used to that used to be we like, you know, my cat looks a lot like my cat's a lot like that guy on that show, the the awful one. And we would have been like, that's weird. That's horrible. Why would you say that? Don't don't share that no, with anyone. It's anyone's. like, oh my god, that's so cool. What the fuck happened to us? They used to call a priest if shit like that happened. But it's true though. This morning at like four in the morning, she wanted to be fed. She gets fed at seven in the morning, but she was pissed off that she wasn't getting fed right away. So she just kept standing on my face. She would just walk on my face. And we'd move her and she'd walk on my face some more. And we'd move her and she'd walk on my face some more. <sighs> Why is the food not... The, the walking will continue until the food happens. Pretty much. And it did until Dan got up and fed her at seven o'clock. So I had like an hour and a half, two hours of the cat just constantly stomping on my face. It's like having kids, but they never learn how to talk. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. She's she's cuter than kids. Aren't you, baby? Yes, you are. You're cuter than stupid human children. She's like, if I had thumbs, I would murder you. Okay. Let's get to the nonsense. Each week, Catherine, the radio dead, our audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And we're going to start off with some airport shenanigans. Oh boy. Yet again. Why does this. Why does so much of this shit keep happening with fucking. You would think, as, as annoying as it is to have to contend with an airport in the first place, you'd want to get through it as quickly as possible as painlessly as possible with a cause just get in and get out and get done with it. I mean, you yes. guys, did, did you guys fly to Florida? We did. And Dan had an easier time of it than me because he has that whole TSA pre-check thing where like he went to Vegas and paid the money and they interrogated him and now he just zips right through and never has to go through security and they don't check his bags or anything. And, and you, on the meanwhile, he gets to zip through security and you're sitting there with the police. And I stand at the line. The nice part is he was waiting on the other side of the line with Starbucks. So, you know, but. Uh, well, you know, th that is a good thing when you can zip through security and, and he, he went about it the right way. Yes. This guy went about it the wrong way. Man delays flight by calling in bomb scare. Gets arrested. Still misses flight. <laughs> I like that they pointed that out. An Italian man was arrested after he delayed his flight by calling in a bomb scare because he was running late. Dude, the that's some bullshit. The unidentified 46-year-old man still managed to miss the uh, Alitalia? 
Alitalia? Alitalia. Uh, Alitalia flight from Turin to Rome on Thursday evening, despite keeping the plane on the tarmac for two and a half hours. The flight How was... How did you still manage to miss it? The flight was only minutes from takeoff when the warning came through and was promptly grounded. It said the most fucking asshole, quote, I heard, he, was, oh. he called in, said, quote, I heard two Arabs say they had put a bomb on board. The businessman is reported to have told emergency services. Despite his best efforts, the man, who was reportedly in uh, Palermo on business, still missed his plane as police officers immediately arrested him when he arrived at the airport. Did you call on your own phone? Did you really? One, you called on your own phone. Mistake two, you did the asshole thing, which is to say that people of Middle Eastern descent are the imaginary black guys of the aviation world. Oh, I saw one of them there foreigners from Iraqistan, and they had a bomb. Dude, fuck you. Man, he's lucky he got arrested. Because them people in the plane for two and a half hours. You ever been stuck on a tarmac delay? Yes. Tarmac delays are... that That's... Not pleasant. That's what hell is going to be like. Yeah. You know that? that That is hell. You're going to go to hell and you're going to wake up and you're going to be sitting in between a really old lady who wants to talk to you about everything... And a man who is well, a well girthed man who is wearing sweatpants and a t shirt that don't fit. And he ain't showered and he's snoring. On and my flight home from Florida, I was in the aisle. And when I sat down, there was one dude in the window. And this mother and kid came through. And I guess they had not bought seats together. They did not have the foresight to buy oh, seats. No. She did not have the foresight to buy a seat with her toddler. So she nagged this dude in the row in front of me until he switched seats with her toddler. Good news, I'm not sitting next to a toddler for the flight. Bad news, this dude was like six foot six. Oh. 200 something pounds. And chatty. I was like, oh. I hate that. There's only ever been one instance. One like, instance. You, you seem nice and all. Fuck. I like put on my headphones and he and the other dude talked their asses off for the whole flight. Like, I think they actually traded digits and shit. And I was like, that's cool. I'm going to be in my headphone land. There, there's only ever been one instance when I've been on a plane and I, someone started talking to me and it was actually cool. And we still, we still, we're still cool. She's a friend of mine now. You know, it's, it's neat. But, like, most of the time, if somebody starts talking to me on a plane, they're like a normal person. I am not a normal person. Yeah, like, does anybody get on public transportation to make friends? No. No. We get on public transportation to get somewhere else. But at that I'm point... I'm not looking to make new friends. After two and a half hours stuck in the airplane, not going fuck anywhere, even the nice people... Yeah. Will tear you apart. Do you have Even you ever the little ladies that want to show you pictures of your grandkids will eat your soul. Have you ever seen uh, uh, Dawn of, of the Dead? The original, the, the Romero, Dawn of the Dead? I saw like the last half hour of it. Yeah, okay. Y y y the, that part where he's about to go to the plane, I mean, yeah. to the helicopter. Yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> it's kind of like you open the door to the plane and that's how... the He's lucky his ass got arrested. Did you hear about the guy that had to get restrained on the flight because he tried to open the exterior plane door because he said he thought it was the bathroom? Gee, Tara, I don't know. Oh, are we doing that next? I'm Have sorry. I heard about that guy? Am I reading ahead? Passenger who tried to open plane door at 30,000 feet thought it was a toilet. Toilet doesn't have a window to the outside. A passenger who was banned for trying to open a jet door at 30,000 feet claims he mistook it for the toilet. James Gray was fined 600 euros after the incident on an Edinburgh to Amsterdam. It. Yeah, it's like 600 bucks to Amsterdam flight after he was told, and was told he can't fly with them for five years. Said the airline staff accused him of trying to open the door to the plane 
but he insists he only touched the handle after confusing it with the door for the toilet. How drunk do you have to be? Just picture in your head the interior layout of an airplane, okay? Now you know where you got on board from. You yes. were you were spatially aware of the place thereabouts where you got on the plane. The emergency exit door is about the same place. Now, did you see like a porta john strapped to the outside of the plane when you got on board? No! I mean, the way air travel's going, that might be <laughs> a few years. We're not there yet. They still do let you pee inside the cabin. Man, we're gonna get to a point they're just gonna hand out diapers. Yeah. When you get on the fucking plane instead of actually having a fucking there's a, okay, Vim. There's an outhouse on the wing of the plane. <laughs> that would be the worst Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> they all think I'm psychic now. They're asking me to solve crimes. How the fuck? How? How in the? You're right. How drunk do you have to be? Yeah, because. The door leading to the bathroom isn't going to have a window to the sky. <laughs> that is that is some spacious bathroom you got in there. There's yeah. clouds and everything. It's called the fucking atmosphere. <laughs> Do you think it's cold enough up there that your pee would freeze? Yes. That... See, make like a pee cloud? Daddy, does that one cloud up there look kind of yellow? This, and, and I only touched the handle as... Man, you are lucky somebody didn't tackle your ass. Yeah. Now, I know that it takes... It's literally impossible when the plane is pressurized to pop that door open. You, you can't just do it. You can't... It just... just you can't just walk over and go, yoink, and the door pops open. Which, you know, is comforting. Yeah. But you're still not supposed to fuck with that because on that off chance that somebody didn't dot the right eye or tighten the right bolt, you don't fuck with that door. You don't look at that door. You don't think about that door unless you in the ocean or some shit. Then you think about that door. Dan got really hooked on this old show called Urban Legends. It was hosted by Natasha Henstridge. It was like this shitty 90s unsolved mysteries type show that he found on Netflix and just watched all of in like two days. And they had this urban legend of a passenger who calls over the flight attendant because he says he hears some kind of whistling coming from his window. And she leans in to investigate and just then... The, the, the little seal in the window that was broken depressurizes and the flight attendant is sucked out the window in pieces. No. They actually said it was plausible. They said that's a thing that could happen. If they the seal in that is broken, it could depressurize and you could get sucked out. And it's such a small window that you would get pulled apart as you did. So me, who's already terrified of flying, is really <laughs> excited to hear that. <laughs> You're not going to get sucked out the window, Tara. I don't sit in the fucking window seat anyway. I don't like to see that I'm not on the ground. I don't trust not being on the ground. So, changing gears here. Uh, you went to a wedding not long ago, didn't you? Like a couple months back? Yes, a couple months back. I was like, did we go to a wedding recently? And yeah, Over the summer. And you had to RSP, RSVP for that, right? We did. <laughs> Okay, now what an RSVP entails it means it tells them you are coming and what meal you want. If you have like special dietary shit sometimes, sometimes depends on the wedding. It could just be you go be here and that's it. But, you know, sometimes they they fancy it up. But um, 
It is considered a social faux pas to not attend once you've RSVP'd. It normally isn't considered something you have to, you know, bill for. Oh, I fucking saw this. And people have no fucking manners anymore. Can I tell you that? Like, I'm kind of an old fashioned ninny. Like, uh, like few things you need to know about weddings, you guys. You don't wear the same fucking color as the bridal party. That's tacky as shit. Don't do it. How do you know what color the bridal party's wearing? Well, it's usually the same color as the invitation. Or, you know, any of the other wedding-related stuff. Don't wear that color. You're tacky as fuck. People getting married? You are not special. Millions of people over the course of history have done this. I don't care what kind of a fucking bridezilla you are, you're not fucking special. You are the 15 millionth bride in human history and nobody gives a fuck. Let it go. Proceed. <laughs> Colton Valley, Minnesota. It's a couple of weeks ago, Jessica Baker was getting ready to go for, to a wedding when her husband, uh, with her husband when she got a call from her mom. Uh, it's called last minute, had something come up and said, I can't make it. Their mom was supposed to watch the kids. Since the invitation said no children, that meant no wedding. But this week, she received a bill for the dinner they were supposed to have enjoyed. Total came to $75.90. The cost reflects the amount paid by the bride and groom for meals. There are RSVP'd for reimbursement and explanation for no, for no show, card, or call, or text would be appreciated. She has no plans on paying it. Really? Really? That's some tacky bullshit. I had people not show up for my wedding. Shit happens. I actually RSVP'd a no-shoot at a wedding around this time last year because that was the day I got out of the fucking hospital. And I felt horrible about it. And I let them know, like, as soon as I could, I have a hole in my leg. I don't think I'm going to make it. Like, I got out of the hospital as they were walking down the aisle. And I went home and slept for six hours. And I felt really, really bad about it. But sometimes shit happens. Like your babysitter fell through. What are you going to do? But to to send a bill to someone you invited to your wedding. That's some bullshit. That's basically sending the message that all you, the only reason we invited you is because we expected a gift. Yeah. I That's mean, the message that you're sending. Like, yeah, you had to pay for their meal. When you throw a big wedding, you are hosting a party. And it is your job as a host and or hostess to be a gracious hostess. And that means sometimes you have to eat some shit. Some people don't have manners. You are supposed to be a gracious host and deal with that. People know show sometimes. Yeah, that sucks. And they're jerks for doing that. People it doesn't mean you get to fucking bill them. You eat that cost. People showing up to your wedding are doing you a favor. They are attending your party. Yeah, they don't have to. It's not like, you know an obligation it's oh i want to do so i like these people so i'd like to see them it's not like you know a, a, a funeral which is and you're a pallbearer or something our culture has gotten different so whipped up about weddings that like mm. i need a week-long bachelorette trip to south beach and a custom-made dress and i need to tell my bridesmaids what they can do with their hair for a year in advance fuck you Serious. It's who, a party. who the fuck can afford a week in South Beach? I had a friend that was asked to do that. She was in a bridal party and they wanted a bachelor at week in South Beach and all the bridal party was expected to pay for it. And it's like, you know what? Go to hell. Like, you are not the first person to ever get married. You did not invent marriage. I'd be, Come like, off it. I'd be like, woman, I have a job. Yeah. I have bills. You gonna there pay my bills? They try and dictate, they insist that bridal party members go on a diet they want to dictate their weight they tell them that they can't change their hair drastically without approval it's ridiculous it's gotten way out of hand you're not fucking special Man. you're just another person getting married if i if i ever get married we're gonna go to percent of the population does it at some point you're not fucking special just have your party i'm sure it will be lovely act like a fucking grown-up if I ever get married, the fucking courthouse, and then we're going to have a big-ass party, and then done. Yeah. 
you know, because they I liked I would much rather invest all the money in the honeymoon part than the fucking wedding part. Because the thing is, and I, I had the benefit of having two sisters that got married before me, so I was able to learn this. Shit is going to go wrong. You can either laugh at that shit or you can have a meltdown every time something goes wrong. Speaking of that serious, it's a fucking party. How do you do you this? You can either enjoy your party or how you can be an this? asshole about it. Tara, how do you do this? Speaking of meltdowns. I am psychic. Our next story again. And, and we got video. This is from the mirror. And I wouldn't have used this story except we got video. How old's your iPhone, Tara? Uh, about a year so you're what I have, a, I have a five but i usually buy one model back because they're cheaper yeah. yeah you got a five it's you know and you got you, you get you pick up the six came out i got the five because the price went down on the five you pick up the phone because you know it's a phone it's you're just going to use it because it's your fucking phone yeah some I people like facebook and stuff some people on the other hand take the get whole the twitter iPhone. fights yeah you do some people, on the other hand, take the uh, the iPhone shit a wee bit too seriously. And yay, look, we got video. Let's take a look. This happened in China. And uh, girl strips naked in shopping center after boyfriend refuses to buy her iPhone 6S. This is actually how I got Dan to buy me the wand at Ollivander's after I was chosen by the wand master. He said no, and I started stripping, and kids started crying, and he bought the wand. You would think, normally, it would occur to me that the whole, you would threaten not to get naked and in order to get what you want. Yeah. Wouldn't that be, you know, it'd be like, if you don't give me this shit, you say goodbye to all this. Mm -hmm. you, you never see it. That's what she was saying. She was showing him what he was no longer going to get. No, no, it's, it's, she starts, and she like pushing and shoving him and. Or maybe she wanted to immediately send nudes to the guy who's going to be her boyfriend when he buys her the phone she wants. Uh, after reportedly failing to persuade her boyfriend to buy her the latest gadget, the woman who's caught on camera in a shopping center in China decided she had only one option. That option was to strip completely naked in front of hundreds of other shoppers. In the clip, the woman can be seen exchanging words with her partner before tearing her clothes off and throwing them on the floor. Her unimpressed boyfriend walks away, but she soon follows, pushing him several times. I don't know how this was supposed to accomplish getting you the phone. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, after you pay... Phase one, take off clothes. Phase two. Phase three, phone! After you have played the naked and crazy card, you're done. There's nowhere left to go. You, you, there's no escalation past that point. You have played your last card. It's it's sort of like the 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 toddlers screaming their damn head off in the Toys R Us. Yeah, and they lay down on the floor and yeah. force mom to physically drag them from the store. Yeah, you're not getting your toy. You're getting pulled out of the car. You're getting pulled out. Maybe it was like, I will do you right here if you buy me the phone. No, she's she's pissed. It, it, if you look at the video, she's at she's like pushing him and and angry. Did you just left that. <laughs> it did. <laughs> No, no, it's... And you know what? The iPhone 6S isn't even really all that good. It's not that much different than the iPhone 6, I swear. You can make moving pictures now. You can make, like, Harry Potter world pictures. Yeah. You can make your picture so, like, if you take a picture of a waterfall, you can make it so the waterfall moves. I'm pretty, for, pretty sure the iPhone 6 can do that, too. I don't think so. It's software-based. That's that's not hardware based. That that's that's software. I don't know. Like I said, I go a model back because I'm fucking cheap. <laughs> and because I like to wait for Apple to work all the bugs out because I am I am an Apple user. I have a Mac computer, I have my iPhone, I have my iPad. Because of that I know they never get it right on the first try, guys. I I've, I've got like I don't understand the people that are in line for whatever the new Apple thing is because it's going to be fucked up. You wait 6 months until they fix it. And then you get the 
I've got a Nexus 5 from like 2013. It's a few years old. I, I got it like last year. I'm keeping the fucking thing because it's it, it's not that it's fine. I don't need a the, the, people go goddamn crazy over the fucking iPhones. I don't understand. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like I, I like my Mac products. I'm never standing in line in the rain for them. Like they're not going away. It's not like they're only going to sell it that day. No, they, they're going to make they have more than three. You wait a month, they're still going to have them, and you can get it then. And it'll probably work better because they'll have fixed all the fuck-ups. Wow. So, <laughs> and and normally, you know, getting naked it should not be part of this iPhone purchase experience. No, generally not. So, have you ever watched Pawn Stars? I ha I think once or twice, maybe, yeah. yeah. Sounds familiar. I watched the one where people buy storage containers and see if there's anything valuable in them. Yeah, no normally, the whole Pawn Store experience... I, I, I did some uh, Pawn Store diving when I was shopping for a guitar when I first started out. Normally, the whole Pawn Store experience, it's not quite as glamorous as they portrayed it on Pawn Stars. Like, you know... They, they'll, they'll, there's the haggling for the price or whatnot. Now, normally a guy just says, I'll give you 20 bucks and get the fuck out. I would feel kind of guilty buying anything at a pawn store, though, because you sell it to them generally with the understanding that you're going to try and get it back at some point. I'm pretty sure this dude wanted it back almost immediately. At least in the movies. So I'd feel like I was pr like taking advantage of somebody else's financial straits. Man tries to pawn video game console with crystal meth inside. Oh. Moultrie, Georgia. Police say a pawn shop found meth inside an old video game console after a man tried to sell it, according to a report. Jared Fournier tried to pawn an old Sega Genesis console at American Pawn. Okay, number one. What do you get for that? Twenty bucks? Yeah. What's a Sega Genesis worth anymore? I mean, for fuck's sake, you, 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 twenty. It's it's not. It's it's like it's a fucking Genesis. Christ's sake! According to a report, um, it happened Tuesday when workers at the shop checked the console after receiving it. They found an amount of crystal meth inside the game cartridge slot. And you know what? Maybe that's why it didn't work. <clears throat> Maybe that's why you couldn't play your games, because you crammed the thing full of meth. That's going to cause problems with your electronics. <laughs> Man, could, I, I, I'm just trying to be like, be like, they pull out the crystal meth and he's he's sitting there going, oh, that's where I left it. So does that bring up the price any? Yeah, I know. Is, is that, is that, that Can I get 100 up? now? Yeah. Let's make a deal, Marty. Monty. It's Monty. Yeah, Monty Hall. They immediately called police who tracked down 48 and arrested him. He was charged with possession of methamphetamine. I love the last line of the story. There was no word on whether the Sega Genesis console was in working condition. <laughs> I'm thinking probably not. Oh. Just a guess. I'm not an electronics expert, but... Uh... For fuck's sake, wouldn't you have thought to check that shit? Before you went and sold it? If you have so much meth that you're not going to miss any, <laughs> you have bigger problems. <laughs> like, either you have used okay. to the point where you forgot you have more, or you have so much that you don't even need to keep track of it. Either way, that's a problem. Uh, you can keep that bag. Let's make some more when I get home. Uh, I got, I got more. Okay. I got this, I got this, you know, exterminator gig going. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> People are like, gotta go fast. That's not how Sonic works. That's not <laughs> how Sonic works. <sighs> so. The cat is snoring. <laughs> Let me see if I can get the mic closed enough so you can hear this. Now 
No? All right. Fine. Ah! Bum, 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 bum. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like banging the microphone directly in my ear and the ear of the entire audience. She, she's, she's not going to snore for <laughs> this night. So that was anticlimactic. <sighs> well, finally tonight. Oh, my God. You remember last week, Tara? You're going to have to narrow that down a bit. When the guy, the ex-con, tried to buy a gun, shot himself in the dick. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about the gun thing, because they make me mad. I, I, gentlemen? Last week, I, I gave you this warning. It's sort of a standard warning here. Lift one leg over the other and clench. Generally, when watching this show, you should not be eating. Don't be eating. Don't be drinking. And you should cross your legs and have ice at the ready. Yeah. Whatever your gender. Here the fuck we go again. Huh, that's not a live link. That's weird. Uh, Yakima Herald. Police under meth's influence, man shoots self trying to save others. Quote around save. And you're like, this is what happens when you play Call of Duty on a fucking meth genesis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to prepare you to take a little ride with us here because, oh boy. Authorities say Martin Eugene Hoyer was on the second day of a methamphetamine binge when he decided to kick in a neighbor's door to rescue her from hallucinatory Mexicans. When he did so, the handgun in his waistband discharged, sending a bullet through his lower abdomen abdomen and through his scrotum not through into into yes yes it doesn't say it came back out no we'll get to that it says it went in we'll get to that hoyer 51 survived 51 old enough to know better survived the gunshot and is now charged with first degree assault felony harassment four counts of unlawful possession of a firearm Police say Hoyer first threatened a female neighbor with a 45 caliber Taurus revolver, pointing at her through the picture window of her apartment. According to police court affidavits, Hoyer told investigators he, quote, heard a bunch of Mexicans and white guys plotting with his neighbor to steal his truck in cash. Hoyer said their voices carried through an air vent from the woman's apartment to his. Uh, okay. The neighbor... All right. Neighbor told police Hoyer stood outside her apartment, armed with a revolver, aimed it at her through the window, and threatened to shoot her for planning to rob him. He then returned to his own apartment next door. Hoyer told police he saw, quote, Mexicans in the trees outside his apartment complex getting like ready. The horrible tree Mexicans. Those are the worst kind. Getting ready to jump out and attack him. And two more Mexicans went to a second neighbor's apartment downstairs from his own, urging her to open Hoyer's door so they could rob him. Already at this point, we are in a world of crazy town. Yeah. This is a nonsense from which light cannot escape. This is a soup. This is collapsed in on itself. You are, th you are imagining tree Mexicans who are ready to jump out and attack you. It's like drop bears or some shit. Only they're Mexicans. Imaginary tree Mexicans are opening for the rectal eels on the next tour. <laughs> they're, they're a weird like punk salsa fusion thing. It's very cool. I guess would be better. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean that to be insensitive. I don't think salsa music is Mexican. 
Boyer said he went to it now. Apparently, now that he heard his imaginary Mexicans, they've turned on the lady next door. Now, they're going to rob her, not him. Hoyer said he went to his downstairs neighbor's apartment with a pistol in his waistband to save her from the Mexicans. From the tree Mexicans. When he raised his leg to kick the door, the firearm went off. Downstairs. This is one of the <clears throat> many reasons. Like, all right, there's basic gun safety. There's like, it, there's a thing called a safety, for instance, that I'm aware of not even knowing anything about guns, really. I really, really don't understand why, of all the places to store your fucking loaded gun, you would store it down the front of your pants. That is, is there a reason for that. You understand gun shit. Is there a reason anyone, any rational person would point a gun at their dick? No, it's TV. Apparently it's because TV. Of all the like, possible places. Let's pick the most painful possible spot on your body where you can get shot and still live. And let's shove the gun right there for storage. It gets better. The downstairs neighbor to get better. The downstairs neighbor told police she heard the bang on her door. As she opened it, she heard a loud bang, saw Hoyer fall to the ground, and heard him say, quote, ow. <laughs> Understatement of the week. You've shot yourself in the balls. That's gonna hurt a little bit. Medical imaging showed the intact bullet had skipped off the ball of his right hip joint and plunged directly downward into his scrotal region where it lodged. It See, it didn't come back out. But it gets better! That's some confused fucking sperm, man. It gets better! Your sperm? Like, your, your sperm think there's a fucking wrecking ball coming through? <laughs> I can't a like a rock. Like <laughs> like, Holy shit, they're tearing the place down. It gets better. It was what one get better. It was one of two projectiles found in Hoyer's body. The other bullet he told police was from a previous gunshot wound. Oh, from the last time. <clears throat> So not only this is the problem with America, because this guy didn't have his guns taken away after the first time he accidentally shot himself. He has four. But prior... at least I guess now there's a much smaller chance that he's going to breed. He has four prior felony convictions. And yeah. OK, so he's not allowed to own a gun. It's not legal, clearly. Search of his home found two 45 caliber revolvers, a rifle and ammunition Plus, small amounts of methamphetamine. You know why it was small amounts? Because he snorted all the rest of it! Yeah. Oh. This... Good news is, now he's got an easier way to take meth. He can just shove it in his scrotum hole. <laughs> It'll absorb real fucking fast that way. <laughs> Tara, you realize the minute you said that, next week we're going to have like news reports of our kids making holes in their scrotum to insert meth? We'll find out tonight on News 10. Oh, I hope so. I hope I started a fake scare about scrotal drug injections. It's the latest thing. Children. Although, I will say, as somebody who a year ago this week has had a hole cut in my person... Pretty sure shoving drugs in it was the is the last thing you're gonna want to do. Children, I didn't even are... want to shove the packing in it. Like, children are firing bullets into their scrotums to induce a methamphetamine high. But then again, we did those prison guys who were putting dice inside in their the dicks, dick yeah, for decorative purposes. Just, you know what, Nancy? Maybe Ray... they should hook up with this guy because now they'll fit not that you would fuck a guy's scrotum so i guess that doesn't work nancy reagan had just say no 
Hey, you know, that would never really struck me as all that effective. I would like to think one of my legacies in life is going to be through this show convincing people never to start doing meth. I really don't see the upside. There is no upside. There like, is. There's at least 62 ways you can die making it. It fucks up your skin. It fucks up your teeth. And it makes you shoot yourself in the dick and get naked <laughs> in public. Like, I see the upside of other recreational drugs. I kind of understand how you would get started. I don't see yeah. the allure of meth. Ah, we have had two genital-related shootings on this show in as in many, many weeks. weeks. Yeah. How the fuck does that happen? Well, people are fucking morons, and they shove guns down their pants. I'm kind of surprised that with all the stories we've had about dumbass chicks shoving guns up their vaginas that we haven't had somebody put a hole in herself from like cervix to sternum it's the first i'm kind of surprised none of those chicks have had their clit accidentally pull the trigger and torn themselves in half <clears throat> we've we've learned tonight that meth is not a good drug don't don't do math the old drugs still work the old drug <laughs> say the old drugs were so much better. Just eat some fucking mushrooms. <laughs> no, for God's sake. We've, yeah, we've learned. Don't don't do meth. We've learned that you can get by with an iPhone five. You really can. You don't need to, to whip out the tits. Yeah, you are not going to die if you don't get an iPhone six today. Put put your. You'll, you'll be okay. Your your bathing shoot, suit area should remain covered throughout your trip to the Apple store. There are probably several responsible grown-ass meth smokers out there. No. No. No, I do not accept no. that. No. This is not, this is not, okay, I accept when you say, don't hate on all gun owners. There are plenty of responsible gun owners out there. Don't hate on shitty drivers. There are plenty of good drivers out there. There are no responsible meth smokers out there. No. Nope. You know why? You know how I know? Because they smoke meth. And that's not a responsible thing to do. Uh, we have learned. They're saying if some chick shot herself in the vagina, it wouldn't make the show because she'd probably die, which I guess is fair. We've learned that uh, if someone doesn't make your wedding, let it go. Just let that shit go. Don't don't be that don't don't be that person. Cause the minute you start doing that, the person you married is sitting there going, "Just be a fucking grown up, Snowflake." Yeah, your your new spouse is sitting there going, "Maybe I should have gotten the prenup." Hmm. We've learned when you're in the airplane, don't mess with the big red lever. No. Leave it the fuck. The, the, the fucking bathroom does not have clouds in it. Nope. Tara, I don't know about yours, but my clit is not prehensile and cannot pull a trigger. Well, you're lost. That's all I'm going to say. We've learned if, uh, yeah, finally this week we've learned prehensile clit that that's <laughs> that's a phrase we needed here on this show and finally <laughs> i'm amazed that kind of hasn't come up already actually finally we learned if you're going to be late for your plane call your airline to rebook yeah not to call in a bomb threat no there's a right way to deal with these things and a wrong way to deal with these things that's the wrong way. One of them involves jail. Yeah. Somebody out there as we speak is drawing fan art of prehensile clit. That would be the worst superpower ever. <laughs> what would your superpower humor? What would your super? Technically, your own name even be at that point. Tara, you've seen the the Incredibles. Literator. You've seen the Incredibles, right? I have. 
Elastigirl. Yeah. All right. Now I want to see a superheroine named the Clitorator. 